Hey everyone, this is George Carlos and welcome to a solo podcast of the Innovator's Mindset. And uh, I, I wanted to share a, a, about an email I wrote um, a few weeks ago and just wanted to kind of talk through, give you some ideas, some tips. And it's actually about um, working in central office. Now, I've mentioned this several times, but I worked as both a teacher, um, an administrator, but I also had some time in central office. And it was it was tough, the transition to go from a school to a central office position, because when I would get really um, bored or felt stagnant when I was in school, sometimes you have to do some office stuff as much as we you know, want to pretend we can be out in classrooms all the time. You do have to do some administrative stuff um, as a principal. Uh, I could kind of just get up and go be present in a classroom. And I felt kids gave me energy. And that was something I really appreciated. But when I worked in central office, I actually struggled because sometimes when I feel that same stagnation with doing admin stuff, I'd go up and be around other adults. And it wasn't just didn't give me the same vibe, same feeling. So I really committed that when I worked in central office, that I would be as present in schools as much as possible. And I felt that not only did it benefit me to be around the people I serve and understand them, uh, it also really had an impact on the people I served. They appreciated my visibility, my willingness to come in and not just kind of pop in and do what I call the, the um, superintendent entourage where I'd bring a team. We'd all pretend we're paying attention to what's going on in the classroom and then, you know, not really see anything, but I would actually like sit in classrooms for hours on end and just be there, whether I had to do email or whatever. And the thing I'd always say to people, I'm not actually here to observe you. I'm actually here to observe the environment that we put you in so I can, you know, help to make better decisions to support you to be successful. Because we always wonder why people are struggling in schools, but then we don't necessarily go in schools and see uh, what we're doing to support them to be successful and really kind of understand that. So uh, I, I wrote this email because I remember actually having a conversation and I, I would love to say this is, was a one-time conversation, but I've had this a a ton of times. Uh, I really try to build relationships when I, you know, speak and get people to understand me. And then they feel a comfort level to share things with me, probably because, you know, they know a little bit about me. They see, you know, who I am as a person, but also it's like a good way to vent and they're not really worried. They're going to get in trouble because I'm not their boss. They, they feel comfortable, a comfort level sharing some things with a stranger. And a lot of times when I talk, people say, I love your stuff, but our central office would never allow this. They're very stuck in their ways. And I wouldn't disagree in many cases. And um, I'm not saying this is all central office people are bad or anything like this, but um, there is a disconnect in many spaces. So I wanted to share some of the insights that I had working in central office. And I, I can't say that I was more successful working in central office than other people were in central office. I'm just sharing insights. You take them for what you will. And maybe they help you, but you know, if you're a teacher listening to this podcast, um, you might think, well, this doesn't actually have to do with you. It actually kind of has everything to do with you. And that's kind of the point. I'm trying my best to support the people who support the people closest to kids. And that's why I wanted to share this. So maybe you might not be a teacher directly, but maybe you disagree with some of the things. Maybe I'm wrong in some of the stuff that I'm sharing, or maybe you'd like a, a different perspective. So if you, if you want to share something, you know, share it in the comments, you know, ideas that you have, what would you would appreciate from, you know, central office staff? Cause a lot of times we talk about school administrators, but we don't necessarily talk about, you know, people working in central office. And I'm not just talking superintendents. I'm talking, you know, curriculum coordinators, tech people, whoever, do we actually um, support those closest to kids? So here's a couple of things that I wrote in the email and I wrote these three points and I want to share them with you real quick. Um, and I'm not going to actually read the email other than reading the points just because I want to, you know, kind of make sure this is authentic and just kind of asking, uh, you know, sharing some insights off the top of my head because I, I just, you know, do you really want to watch me read? Do you want to hear me read? Maybe not. Uh, unless it's an audiobook, then you totally want to hear me read. But other than that, I just want to share some insights. So here's the first one of the three insights that I actually shared. And so the first one is, do you add work to your staff or focus on removing barriers and freeing up their time? So one of the things I noticed immediately in central office, I don't think I really picked it up when I was a teacher, or even a principal, 
a lot of things would come down from central office that we had to do. So for example, January was like survey time and it would be like a survey from the tech department, survey from the curriculum department. All these surveys would be thrown upon us. And sometimes someone from central office would actually come to the school. They give us pizza. So we'd say real nice things on, you know, about central office. And so you're spending all this time filling this out, giving them feedback. And it was more, I think felt sometimes is not more about feedback on how they could better serve us. It was feedback to kind of justify the jobs that they actually had. And, you know, not coordinating those things and understanding that a lot of them came out at the exact same time, or at least in the same proximity of time, it was just overwhelming. You have so many things you have to do as a teacher. And so how do you actually, um, you know, do those things when you're just the demands, you know, for justifications of jobs, et cetera, keep coming your way. So my goal as a, uh, you know, as a central office staff was to try to do everything I could to remove things that staff had to do. Could I filter stuff away from, you know, my, from the teachers, from the schools, so that we could take care of it, so they could just have as much time as possible teaching kids. And I think when you have that mentality, and it's not always possible, right? I, I would love to say like, oh, all I gotta do is this thing and that will free up time all the time. But having that mentality is really, really crucial. And whether it's kind of going in and maybe, you know, subbing, uh, subbing superintendent, one of my favorite people in the world, uh, George Ann Warnock, she, you know, would go in and she'd be a part of school and she'd actually, you know, sub for teachers when they needed it. And she would actually remove barriers so that teachers could have as much time as possible. Even when I worked at, you know, central office, when I worked at, um, when I worked at, uh, uh, you know, as a school district administrator, one of the things I really try to do was to ensure that everything that we were saying, like, hey, we should try this in schools, we provided time to our staff to actually have that during the school day. And like, even that was hard for me because I knew you wouldn't just have a substitute teacher come in and actually, uh, and then the teacher just didn't have to do anything. They got to prep for it and all that other stuff. So there's always that time commitment, but I knew that there, the time demands on teachers were so high that if, if we ask them to do all the things they have to do in school, plus put in extra time after school, because there's some initiatives that we thought were really, really important, it was just overwhelming. So we said, look, if we can really just kind of support people to, to actually, um, to, to, you know, for our initiatives, we provide them time during the school day, they're more likely to achieve them. If you don't actually provide that time, you're also saying it's not really important. And here's a little example of something I did. I used to uh, work at a central office and I would call a school principal and say, hey, I'm going to actually book a sub or two for your school and here's some slots for um, your staff. Tell me when you have, um, tell me when you have like your schedule, what the, your periods look like. And if any staff wants to ask me questions, I can support them in any way we will have a sub cover their class and they can just spend 40 minutes, an hour with me and they can ask whatever they want. It was, I never went there with an agenda, maybe other than the agenda of connecting with people and supporting them. But I wasn't like, I want them to individually learn this thing. I would just say like, hey, you know, here's kind of the portfolio of the work I do. What's one way I could support you? And staff were really appreciative of that because they could do it during the, the, the school day. They get one-on-one -on -one attention um, for that to try something new. And then I would do everything to support them. And even though it freed up time because we did in the day, I still understood they had to plan for that sub. They had some things that they actually had to do to make that happen. But I wanted to minimize that as much as possible. So again, like when we focus on the things that are happening from school districts, are we just kind of inundating and adding stuff on to, to our staff? Because it's we see it's really important, but not realizing other people see this stuff as important. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. We did this in school, by the way, too, right? Let's say... I make this joke all the time and it's kind of true, right? Like every high school teacher thinks their subject's the most important subject that's ever been taught. And so they might not really necessarily think that if I give this kid 30 minutes homework, well, of course they should be doing homework in this. But what if every teacher that kid has that day adds 30 minutes of homework they have to do? Well, that kid like basically has no life outside of doing homework at night. So we have to be thoughtful of that because like, does that actually make kids better at school? Does it make them like school? Or will they just start cheating and using AI the same way we looked at the back of the book? So I think it's really important to kind of think about 
how do we get as many things done in the school day? How do we provide time for staff? Not just add time because something that we see is important. Um, the second one is, are you actively involved and present in spaces you make decisions for? And I, I, I referenced this um, earlier. This is something really important to me. And I said, like, I basically said, uh, I wrote this in What Makes a Great Principal. You can see the link to the book down below. If you're in a role that makes decisions for what the environment looks like in a classroom, you need to be present in those classrooms. And the example I, I've shared for years is simply, um, I would contact a school, and I, I kind of briefly mentioned this pri prior, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit deeper. I would contact a school and I would say, hey, um, I just I need to do some email. I need to work on some reports. Can I sit in a staff member's classroom? I just sit, like, just tell me who, anyone who's open to it. I'm going to just sit there for like two, three hours. So I would take my laptop, which because we have laptops, you can do that all the time. And I would, you know, drive down to the school and I would distinctly say to the staff member, look, I am not observing you. I'm observing the environment we put you in. And I remember this one time, uh, a staff member was trying to get uh, access to, or was, you know, kids were using iPads and, you know, they had the roll of the cards, that whole thing. And then the staff member, because they couldn't get Wi-Fi connected to the iPad, um, basically played a little game of Cirque du Soleil, <laughs> stood on a desk, and then actually like wave the iPad like it's going to get like, you know, a thunderbolt of Wi-Fi access to it. And it was like, it was hard to watch because I, it was hard to watch because I'm like, this is not a good situation for this teacher, right? Something's going to happen. They're going to hurt. And what I knew about this teacher, because I had spent a lot of time in schools, this teacher would jump all the hurdles possible to make things happen for students. But other teachers who didn't see the value of this, as soon as they ran into hurdles, said, that's why I never use these things, and then they'll never use them again. So I remember watching that teacher go through all these complications and you know go through all these barriers to just try to get stuff to work, and it's already you know terrifying getting a bunch of kids on these devices. And so I sat there in the room, just kind of noticing, and I called the IT department and said, hey, this teacher, we need more access points because the Wi-Fi is not working. And if, if it doesn't work in this classroom, um, then, and it's got to work the same in every classroom, they need access to this stuff or they're not going to use this. And if they don't use it, it kind of negates the need for us. And I remember the teacher looking at me and she's like, thank you, thank you. Because I, I saw what was going on, I advocated. And here's something, I remember this other conversation. We, this is like, you know, shows how old I am. Um, you had this login procedure and it would go through all these district filters and blah, 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 whatever. And I remember saying to our IT department, how long does it take for someone to log on? They're like two minutes. I'm like two minutes to you or two minutes to a grade one kid who doesn't know how to type to, <laughs> to actually, you know, you know, and times that by 30 kids in a classroom. So like two minutes to someone who's very comfortable with technology is very different than two minutes to 30 kids in a classroom barely use technology, don't understand it. So one of our roles was to remove as many of those barriers as possible. So it would just be on and ready to go because all those things you eliminate along the way, you also eliminate excuses. Why I don't use this, right? The more barriers you remove, you have the ability to remove, the more people will actually jump in and try new things. But if you continuously have those barriers and you don't understand that there are barriers, then people aren't going to try new things. They're not going to better just a very select few. So part of the role of administration leadership is to remove as many barriers as possible for people in the spaces working with kids so that more people will try the things that we're saying that we want to achieve in our schools. And so the last one I wrote is this, do people feel comfortable connecting with you and sharing their true feelings and insights or do they think you're unapproachable? So I think I wrote about this, but I'm not reading it. I just read what was in bold there. I worked in two districts and in one district, I was there, I think for five years, never met the superintendent ever, never met the superintendent. Couldn't even, I couldn't even tell you what they look like. I have no clue. And it was the same superintendent the entire five years. And then I went to another school district and on my very first day, I met not only the superintendent, but I met every assistant superintendent, every associate superintendent, um, every person because they made it a point that everyone that came into that district met those people immediately. And actually what was interesting the the district that I went to was much larger than the previous one and actually was the same you know um, size uh, you still had to travel but they made sure that people met those people because you'd have those conversations 
And when you have that relationship, you feel connected. And I remember there's one of the superintendents and I said to him right away because I met him. I said, hey, my name's George. Uh, I actually came from this district. I was doing these initiatives and I would love to do these things, you know, in, in the current, in this district. So if you ever need me, please let me know. And sure enough, uh, about two, three weeks earlier, he contacted me and said, hey, we're, we actually have this. I know you mentioned. And I, the, he would have never known if I never had the opportunity to meet him. And I would have probably never said anything if I didn't you know, feel comfortable and just saw the superintendents in a very informal space, you know, just connecting, having conversations, you know, eating lunch and having this. And I know it seems uh, like even just saying that out loud is like, of course you should do that. You, you serve the more, the higher you go up in any organization, the more people you serve, not the other way around. It's so important to understand, but a lot of people feel like, oh, that's a political position. They're like kind of, you know, untouchable. And sometimes, you know, we can, I've seen people act that way and we, we lose people a, a long way. And I actually just noticed that <laughs> I wrote this, I saw it cause I just saw this keyword, Darth Vader. I said, um, I, I actually wrote, are you visible in schools and classrooms? And if you are, do staff, students, and community see you approachable as approachable or operating from a pedestal? Or does the Darth Vader theme music enter their minds of staff as you enter classrooms? Like, dun, 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 dun. and that's like, is that Darth Vader? I think so. Maybe I get copyright strike for that one. Um, but that, that to me was really, really approachable or really important is that not the necessity of being approachable. Um, when I was a, when I first became a principal, I was one of the youngest people on staff as a principal. And what was unique, was in interesting to me was I had teachers who were way better teachers than I ever could have been and had been there lots of experience, but they felt intimidated, not because of who I was, but because of my title. So I wanted, you know, kind of going back to one of the other things I said was I went into classrooms all the time as an administrator because I didn't want you to feel uh, discomfort. That's why a lot of people feel discomfort when administrators come in because it's so rare and it's like, why are they here today? Right? Like, am I in trouble? Is something wrong? Whereas if you're in there all the time, it's just second nature. You don't even think about it. And the reason I wanted that is because then you can see, you know, really what's going on in school. It's not a, like a fake 50 minute thing. It's actually you see those people feel comfort. They know you. There's a familiar familiarity with them. But one of the things I used to say to my staff all the time, it's not about your idea or my idea. It's about the best idea and I don't care where it comes from. And so I would encourage my staff to challenge me on things, challenge on things they disagreed with because I didn't want to make the wrong decision and hold on to it because it was my decision. I wanted to make the best decision possible. And sometimes, you know, my staff knew better than I did. And sometimes I shared this recently on a podcast, even things that I... You know, I put out for conversation, you know, as an administrator and I shared my views. The majority of my staff would be very opposite of me. And I wouldn't say, no, you have, I'm the principal. You have to tell my views. If I always say, hey, it's not about your idea or my idea. It's about the best idea. And the majority of people kind of support an opposite position. I would say to them, okay, I'm willing to go your way. Let's see how this goes. We'll revisit this. That I wouldn't just kind of, you know, basically say, this is how it is. I'm the boss. This is how you do it. There were some times where I had to say, this is how it is. And that could be because of, you know, uh, district initiatives or whatever, government initiatives, whatever. But I would be very clear on that. If I put it up for conversation, um, I was open to changing my mind. And are you in that space where you actually encourage people to challenge you? Uh, a little activity I do when I work professional learning days is I share some content and I say this here, what I, here's what I want to know. What are your questions? What are your ideas? And what are your challenges? What do you want to challenge me on? And I say to people, you're, you're more than welcome to challenge me in the room. What you're not allowed to do is challenge me in the parking lot at the end of the day with your friends when I'm not there. You have to challenge me in the room because I don't know if I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong and I'm open to changing, but I want to hear the perspective. Don't share it on the side and help me kind of do better to support you because I'm, I'm not always right. And I'm still learning through this process. And when you have administrators that really authentically encourage staff to challenge them for the good of students, the staff will appreciate you way more. You might be wrong sometimes, but that you're willing to change your mind gives you so much more credibility than sticking with something because it's your thing. So again, those, those three things I want to share with you, the, the things for central office, 
Um, do you add work to your staff or focus on removing barriers and freeing up their time? Are you actively involved and present in spaces you make decisions for? And then the last one, do people feel comfortable connecting with you and sharing their true feelings and insights or do they think you're unapproachable? When I, when we do our, our best to work together and tap into the wisdom of the entire organization and tap into the experience of the entire organization, Ultimately, we do better for kids. And that's the whole goal of the work we do every day. So I just want to share those insights with you. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I hope this helps, you know, maybe a teacher, maybe a central office person. Maybe it's a great piece of conversation. But I love your insights. Please feel free to comment on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this. Thanks for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.